The Sonic the Hedgehog spin-off series Knuckles breaks a premier record for Paramount Plus, while Sony makes a huge bid in order to buy Paramount. Is Paramount perhaps saved? Let's talk about that on That Park Place. Hello, I am Jonas J. Campbell, an investigative reporter for That Park Place, and here with me is the keeper of the Master Emerald, Mr. Vash Sky. Vash, how's it going today? Going very well, just keeping that Master Emerald that you've been talking about and collecting coins along the way. So, or rings? That's rings for Sonic. Rings, yes. Yes. It's Mario collects coins, Knuckles collects rings, and as long as he's got one cent left in his pocket, he can never die. Uh, I think that's the lesson we're supposed to learn from uh, the Sonic the Hedgehog games. Hold on to your money. It's your lifeblood. Oh my. I, I hate to think of the implications of all that. But I, I do want to go to this story. By the way, Vash, I, I have seen it. Uh, in fact, I've seen it twice, if that gives any indication. Have you seen the Knuckles show yet? I have not, but I've heard very good things about it. I've also heard very bad things about it. I've, I've heard oh. from some people that it's horrible, but I personally enjoyed it a lot. We'll tack on a little review here at the end. I'm sure there'll be some comments throughout, but I want to go to this story out of The Hollywood Reporter. Uh, and of course, other websites are, are also running it. Knuckles says opening weekend record for Paramount Plus original series. The Sonic the Hedgehog spinoff also helped boost viewing of the movies on the streamer. This by Rick Porter. There he is. There's Knuckles the Hedgehog in one of his few, sorry, Knuckles the Echidna. He's an echidna. Why did I just call him a hedgehog? We're leaving that in because uh, I deserve the hate that I get in the comments for that one. Paramount Plus got a record-setting opening from its Sonic the Hedgehog adjacent series, Knuckles, the six-episode series featuring Idris Elba voicing the title character and also starring Adam Pally, amassed four million hours of viewing worldwide over its first three days of release, a record for a Paramount Plus original series, the streamer says. Paramount Plus's announcement also marks a rare instance of publicly disclosing any viewing data for its programming. Paramount Plus has 71 million subscribers, parent company Paramount Global said in its first quarter earnings report. There's a lot to unpack in this first uh, paragraph. By the way, it says that it is features Idris Elba voicing the title character and also starring Adam Pally. The thing that I would say here is this is mostly starring Adam Pally because it's a lot cheaper to put Adam Pally on screen than it is to put Idris Elba as, sorry, Knuckles the Echidna on screen with Edri Idris Elba voicing him. Both of those things. Knuckles from a production standpoint, expensive to put on screen. Idris Elba's voice, probably one of the most expensive things to incorporate into this show. Another thing that I think we should point out, Paramount Plus has not publicly uh, shown any of their numbers for the streamer. But there have been massive series that have been on Paramount+. Plus. Yellowstone, obviously, is not first run on Paramount+, Plus, so we wouldn't count that as a Paramount Plus original. But Star Trek Discovery, Star Trek Strange New Worlds, uh, Star Trek, I think Star Trek Prodigy, uh, which has now been canceled, and I think they've dumped it to Netflix uh, for a second season. Maybe. I, I haven't been keeping up with that one. And, of course, Star Trek Lower Decks have all gone to Paramount+, Plus and not had merely as many viewing hours as this one drop of the entire Knuckles series. so And don't forget those South Park specials there. Oh, that's a very good point. Now, th those don't have as many uh, minutes, of course, to them, but South Park was a, an accredited hit by, by most estimations here. So I see a problem here that maybe Paramount Plus isn't hitting on all cylinders with their well-known franchises. Obviously, South Park, they can't put the entire series of South Park on Paramount Plus, but they can do the specials. There's been some courtroom drama over that. Star Trek should be one of the pillar brands of Paramount Plus, and, and it was one of the main draws when they advertised it back when it was CBS All Access. Doesn't seem to be pulling in the viewership numbers there. I think they have a, a big problem on their hands, but Knuckles seems to be a lot of fun. We've talked a little bit about the Sonic the Hedgehog movies. Now, Vash, if you say no to this one, we might actually have a problem on our hands. Have you seen the Sonic the Hedgehog films? Yes, I have seen the Sonic the Hedgehog films, and, and I must say I was quite impressed with their adaptations, depictions. They, it captured my interest a lot more than I thought they were going to. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I would be of the same uh, inclination here. My kids really like Sonic the Hedgehog. In fact, Sonic the Hedgehog 1 was one of the last movies that I saw before the pandemic shut everything down. So I thought that was kind of hilarious that that ended up being the last one when I, I talked to one of my kids about it. We went to go see the movie, and I, I pointed out, what if the last movie I ever see in a theater is Sonic the Hedgehog. And there was a tinge of sadness when I said that. But then when my kid heard me say that, he's like, yeah, isn't that awesome? 
That's a great moment so, right there. And then, of course, on the other side of it, uh, when when movie theaters were just trying to get people into anywhere they could get people into theaters, we ended up going to discount tickets to get Sonic to see Sonic the Hedgehog. And then, of course, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 when that came out. So I had only seen six movies in theaters in a very short space period of time and 50 percent of all of the movies that i saw in theaters were featuring sonic the hedgehog in and i want to say a two-year span so there's a, a surprising amount of my film budget that went towards uh sonic the hedgehog there for a short period of time it's also uh, funny to say that my favorite scene in the sonic the hedgehog movie is the bar fight in the same way, it's funny to me that my favorite episode of Knuckles is the episode, uh, I, I want to say it's episode three, where Adam Pally is hiding out at his mother's house and she happen, he happens to show up right at the start of Sabbath dinner and his mother is played by Stockard Channing, uh, a, well known from Greece. I don't know if that's a spoiler or not, but but the episode itself centers around the Sabbath dinner and Adam Pally's character, who's uh, Wade Whipple, and some of his issues and, and that, that arrested development phase that seems to be very popular in movies, having an adult character who's trying to figure out how he can actualize himself. But following that would be the following episode. But number two, a very close number two, there is a rock opera episode. And again, I'm going to say maybe some light spoilers for the Knuckles series here. It is a rock opera set at a bowling alley, and one of the guys from Lonely Island directed it. It has one of the guys from Mighty Boosh, uh, who is singing the entire time. He plays a prominent role in the episode. And also, Michael Bolton provides the voice of some merging of Wade Whipple and Knuckles in this dream sequence that is very heavy on the sonic lore and very heavy on the, the musicality. It's a little weird. It's a little zany, but I really liked it, and I felt like they really went for it on this series. The, the thing that I would say is if you are showing up specifically to see Knuckles and you don't care anything about the Sonic the Hedgehog movies, you're probably going to leave disappointed. But if you find the character of Wade Whipple, who is basically Adam Pally doing the same bit he's done in several movies, including Iron Man 3, essentially playing that same role, you're not going to like this if you don't like that. But I, I find him very funny. And so this series, to me, hit on all cylinders. Now, the last episode, they have to play very heavily into the internal lore of the season and, and Wade Whipple's personal problems. So if, you don't, if you're not interested in that, you won't like this. Also, Carrie Elwes plays a role in the show. I won't spoil who that is or how he relates to um, Adam Pally's character. But I like the show. I've seen it twice. Once was to review it for my kids, and I d ended up deciding the younger ones, it wasn't appropriate for them. But my oldest did like it very much and, and wants to watch it again. I might go through and edit a couple of things out of it. They take the Lord's name in vain a few too many times. It's very much in what probably should actually be PG here, as opposed to Disney's PG, which is their way of saying, no, no, we promise it's not a G-rated movie, even though it's a G-rated movie. Like Frozen is PG or the new Toy Story movies are PG. This is probably an actual PG. It's not PG-13 but it's about as far as you can get with that rating. That review has probably gone long, long enough. If anyone in the comments has seen this, uh, feel free to add clarity for people that are not me, that have not seen this series, to add your opinions to the mix, to tell me whether or not this series is fantastic or it's horrible, because there doesn't seem to be much in between. So Vash, uh, in the same way I ask you uh, when it comes to Bluey, does that make you want to see it more? Or does that make you say, I'm going to pass? And by the way, I will not be offended in either direction on that. I might pass. Look, I, I like the Sonic character. I like the Sonic games, obviously. And uh, I was really excited to see the uh, first movie right there. The second movie being better than I expected, for sure. I That's probably where my interest in the character uh, ends right there. However, your description does make me at least consider it. I mean, if I'm uh, up on any of my streamers and I see that, maybe I will indulge. But uh, it doesn't necessarily captivate my interest, uh, at least initially. Now, to, to, to bring this back to the story that we're covering here, what does that say about Paramount Plus that I've just described? What is the most viewed premiere on their platform within its premiere window? And you have said, I don't know, maybe uh, if it's on and I'm in the mood, maybe I'm going to watch it. I'm not really excited about it. I like the thing that this is based on, but it's not really for me. That spells a lot of danger for uh, Paramount Plus to me. Now, the, the other thing that we need to incorporate into this conversation is that Sony, with, uh, with Apollo management, has issued a $26 billion cash bid, all cash, not just a bid, not a we're going to trade stock for stock here. They want to pay cash to buy Paramount 
from uh, Sherry Redstone and the other people that also own Paramount. It's just that Sherry Redstone controls all the shares. This is, of course, a competing bid with whatever Skydance, uh, Larry and David Ellison's uh, massive amount of money because Larry Ellison owns Cisco and has large swaths of cash that he probably bathes in. Uh, he can also buy Paramount for whatever amount he wants. I think he's only going to have to spend about $2 billion to buy it, and then we'll restructure the company. So it seems like Sony and Apollo Management is a good backup bid here for Sherry Redstone if they want to restructure this company, which is a failing company. They've got a failing streaming service. Uh, all those linear networks are apparently not enough to keep the, the lights on. And uh, National Amusements, which owns Sherry Redstone shares, owns a bunch of movie theaters, which uh, those aren't doing so well right now anyways. So Vash, given that it sounds like someone else will be owning Paramount within a year, how do you see this for the future of, let's say, Sonic the Hedgehog, Star Trek, and Paramount in general? Well, An answer I, in the form of a rock opera. In the form of a rock opera? Well, I don't know if I can do that. Maybe uh, maybe do a little bit of a Bohemian Rhapsody or something? I'm not sure. Look, I think Paramount's issues are are pretty, they're pretty profound. And I don't think, you know, regardless of how Paramount Plus performs, unless it performs absolutely ridiculously well, like takes over Netflix or something like that. I don't think that's necessarily going to change the fortunes of Paramount itself. So that's, I think, the complicating factor right there. I think Paramount Plus is on a good trajectory. However, we're in this era of Wall Street investors and how they want insane returns on investment very, very quickly. I don't think Paramount Plus's performance, how it's done so far, how, how good it's done is necessarily going to change those fortunes either. It's just a, it's, it's a, it's a very complicated question in a very complicated time. As well-watched as Sonic or Star Trek might be, obviously we've seen issues with those brands as well, especially Star Trek. That's a fair point. Of course, as, as I said before, I would like to throw this to the commenters. What do you think this is going to mean for Paramount? Is this is is their biggest series premiere ever just a blip on the path to being absorbed by some other company? Or is this maybe a turning point for them? Uh, let us know in the comment section down below. Of course, like this video if you like this video and consider subscribing to That Park Place for all the news that should be fun. Thanks for watching That Park Place News. For more information, consider checking out www.thatparkplace.com. And don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and send this out on your favorite social media accounts.